<laughs> Holy smoke, don't fight it too hard. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe it worked. Yes. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> yeah, exactly right where it should be though. Get up here. Right in front of his face and had to drag it to him. It's what they call drifting up here. But because the wind's going against us in the uh, opposite direction, of which way the current's going it's making the drift kind of hard you know so you can't really drift back over them so what i did was i pointed the the boat into the wind and then started dragging my line behind the boat and get him back because he came out about 40 feet of water actually 47. you can see right there i've got 51 feet and you can see fish dispersed all the way through that now anything in the upper screen there is more than likely going to be perched and all that but what i'm targeting is this these remnants down there that's what i'm gonna call those because those are uh, those are bass and those are fish that are down on the bottom oh you can see my fish right there to where he swung down straight to the bottom after i released him there we go i screenshotted that i'll put that up for you in this video so pretty cool that worked got to trust your electronics guys and that's it right there again practice that earlier in the year to build up some uh, confidence in doing it and look at here it's paying off so every chance you get to practice anytime go for it so i think that's what you do from the back there honey when i start dragging it you just drag from the back of the boat and drag with me which i'm trying to think of how i'm going to catch fish in your position that's what I'm trying to do too. Like I'm dropping straight down on fish right now that I see, trying to keep that weight on the bottom there too. I can feel that weight just ticking the bottom there. Oh, pulled it off the bottom a little. Gotta make sure it stays on. Team Lou's Custom Pro Speed Stick. This is the tube special. This is my drop shot rod. TLP 2000 on there. It's a great reel. My gotcha ones. We went over some pretty good juice there. Oh, honey's working him. Beyond the bounds guide service. Putting you on them. <laughs> well, bummers. Tug is the drug. Tug is the drug. Got one. Like I almost know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's tugging. That'd be a better quality fish. I can see him dancing on the uh, on the graph there. Look at that right there. That's me fighting this fish. Talk about efficiency, guys. There, instead of fishing this entire shore, what I did was I gave it one pass with my electronics, came back, first drop, started dragging just a little bit. But what I did was just marked fish on my first drop and then landed that guy get him back in there as fast as possible pretty cool pretty cool but that's using your electronics right there you need to let me drive that thing yeah you need, just let me take her for a quick spin I feel good about this i feel I feel really good about this right here we will see I feel really good a lot of good looking fish down there in the bottoms 30 feet a little shallower than we've been catching them. Oh, he's right on that line there too. Honey, got one. I put her on fish. The guide service, beyond the bounds guide service. He's a fighter. Oh, honey, catching a small mouth. In the boat. I've got 20 pound braid on this, but it's to an eight pound leader very light wire finesse hook and just just trying to play it out letting the drag play it out i might chase it chase it down with the trolling motor here in a second because they'll get in that current and really really move watch it just be a two pounder or a one and a half but still 
you know, when you've been catching dinks and smalls, it was finally good to roll over a good group of them. And I marked them on the, marked them on the thing here. There they are. That's them. Get a screenshot of that. Doing it all while we're fighting the fish. Spot has produced a couple of, oh, he wants to jump, no jump. No jump, just stay down, just stay down. <laughs> Woohoo! Gonna be the best one I've caught thus far. Oh. <laughs> Look at that! That's what we came for! Woohoo! That finesse hook, a lighter gauge finesse hook. Oh, I lost my. Woo! I was, I lost my weight and everything, man. Talk about hanging on by a thread there. It's a Palomar knot with a. <laughs> yeah. Can you get my phone out of there? Let's go. Let's, let's find some more fish. All right, y'all. I think we finally figured out how to target these bass. It took a little experimentation, took a little practice, a couple test runs, but. Uh, you know, finally found a way to kind of really effectively target these bass that has produced a few fish here and there. What I'm going to show you on my Lowrance units is basically how I'm doing it. Now, I tailored my graphs down. So one of the things in, that I did was under settings, I changed my contour depths and I changed my contour depths to 30 feet. And that gave me all the deep water, but it also gave me the, the, the humps and things that are on the main channel. You know, from that, I just started scanning at the depth that I was marking fish and kept marking fish. And so every time I marked fish, I would mark fish. Now I'm gonna show you what that looks like on my graphs here. But then I marked around and then I drove back up like I'm doing right now. And I drifted that area, dragging my bait. And so that's what was able, enabled me to land a fish, my mom to land a fish, uh, miss a couple hookups, and then finally land my first good fish uh, of the trip. So uh, let's drift it again. I marked that area where the good fish came from. Uh, so hopefully we can get on some more, but let me show you these graphs real fast. You can see how I marked them all along the, the edge right there. And that's exactly where you would expect smallmouth to be. To be. But then I just drifted that edge. You can see how I drifted along that line to uh, to target those fish. I just want to make a point real fast that you know this is one of the reasons as to why I fish tournaments. I enjoy the process of fishing a tournament, having fun. But most importantly, it takes me to new places, new bodies of water, makes me fish outside of my box. On the Potomac, everything's shallow, shallow grass. With a lot of community holes, you're not really given the opportunity to do this. And so anytime you fish outside of the box, you get a chance to become a better angler. And that's what I'm just trying to do. I'm trying to have fun and just be a better angler. So, you know, get out there, fish tournaments if you want to, or just go to new bodies of water, try different new techniques. Again, that's why I bought this Skeeter, because I knew it would allow me to do exactly what I'm doing to the best that I possibly could, to have the best fishing experience that I could. Let's, uh, let's go out here and map up a few more, see what we can find, and hopefully get on a good school of some big ones. All right. Good gum.
Can we fish? Dropped right on some fish. <laughs> I was about to say, I dropped right on some. Holy smoke, don't fight it too hard. <laughs> Let him tire himself. <laughs> don't get him hung up on the motor. Don't, don't, you'll, you'll burn your hand if you do it too hard. Just keep. Just keep pressuring me. <laughs> Just let him tire himself. He's a big one. Get the net out while you're doing all this. Oh man, guys, talk about just stopping and getting on a fish. My mom, first drop on in this spot that we just picked out at Lou's Reels. That's a that drag just screaming. Cause this is a good one, guys. This is at least like four, maybe five pounders. See that drag's fighting him for you. Easy. Switch back on the other side because it looks like you. There you go. Gonna be a second. We gonna be a second. Don't rush him. Just he forgot he was hooked. Bring him. Bring him over to the net. I think he's ready. He ain't done yet, is he? <laughs> See, that's why you have to have that drag right there. Cause when he goes to run. <laughs> he dropped right down. I even seen him too, and I was like, oh, that, I was like, we're dropping right down on some fish. Maybe switch, switch to your other side if, if he's just, just keep it, you gotta keep that hook kind of straight up into him. All right, easy, don't lean him too much. You just want, you want to kind of stay vertical in it because that keeps that hook pegged to that top of that mouth there. <laughs> you catch a six pounder, I man. See I see you. You do? Yeah, he's down there, he's down. Oh. <laughs> Goodness! Hey, I with that wow. one! Wow! <laughs> we gotta weigh him now. Here we do. He biggest one so far. Woo! I wish I could take credit for this one. He got my worm. 411. 411. <laughs> you ready to put him back in? Yeah, ready to put that baby back in there. Hold him a little bit just so he can get his uh, strength back a little. He's ready. Okay. Okay. Kick. Kick. He got under the boat. How about that? He took my worm. Beyond the Bounds Guide Service coming to you. We're booking yeah. trips 2019 <laughs> St. Lawrence River. Patterned them up, guys. I mean, we scanned. We scanned about three to four other points after catching our last fish. And then I was like, what? Well, I see something over there on the map. Let me shoot over there. Scanned it once, said, all right, this, this has got the juice on it. Came back, circled, started our drift. My mom dropped straight down. I look at my graph and go, man, I just dropped straight down on some. And she's like, oh, I got a fish. <laughs> and she pulls up a four pound, her biggest fish of the trip thus far. She always outfishes me. Five. Almost five, yes. Uh, what was it? 411? 411. 411. Mm. I think all the action's back here on the back of the boat. I might just leave this camera facing this way. <laughs> Get after it, small mouse slayer. I'm going to retie. I just had less, uh, less leader material available. And my weight was kind of close to my bait. And I'm using a heavier weight. And you got to think that if these fish are going to be this finicky to where, you know, they're not going to touch a 12 pound leader because I was using a 12 pound leader yesterday or the other day and wouldn't get nothing. So, and literally as soon as I downsized, I got bit on an eight pound leader. So if they're that finicky, then you got to think that one, a heavy weight, maybe the weight too close to the bait, maybe too much leader material or too much braid nearby something like that could also spook them so at least that's my thought yeah come on she's out fishing from the back again good job honey you feel good oh we... loosen your drag like i showed you there but then i mean that other one it wasn't until he jumped yeah another uh two pounder here bring him over here he's done <laughs> <laughs> it's 
That's actually a good quality that we've gotten on thus far right there. I got him hunting with six pounds in the back of the boat. <laughs>